We are going to start 4.1, which is probability. I'm going to break it up into two different parts. So probability is the underlying foundation on which the important methods of inter inferential statistics are built. Statisticians reject explanations based on very low probabilities, which is called the rare event rule. So the basics of probability, our definition for probability is the likelihood that an event occurs. So you'll specify what the event is and we'll do the likelihood of that. So remember in one of those crash courses talking about that statisticians like to use coin flipping a lot. So that will be one of the events that we talk about. So if we flip a coin, what's probably getting heads? What's probably getting tails? Um, Skittles, what's probably getting a red Skittle? So we're looking at what is the probability of that? What's the likelihood that that event occurs? So it's going to be expressed as a number zero and one, where zero is an impossible and one is certain. So it's kind of like percentages too. So zero would be a zero percent, which it's not going to happen, it's impossible. And one represents a hundred percent chance that it's going to happen. So that's certain. I'm gonna make a little number line. So if I have zero, that is considered impossible. So if I get a probability of zero, it's an impossible event. It's never going to happen. Kind of like if somebody asks you out on a date, you're like, 0% chance I'm going to say yes. Is that you know how that feels? <gasps> <laughs> Burn. That hurt. That stung me. All right. What about a one? So this is your certain event. It's absolutely going to happen. And then right there in the middle is 0. 0.5. And so this is kind of like your 50-50 shot. So probably getting heads. Probability of getting tails. Those are 50 50 chances. So these are called likely. And then if we go above 0. 0.5, close to 1, let's name that 0. 0.75. So that's a high chance, high probability. So I'm going to put highly likely. or very likely. And then in between impossible and likely would be called possible. It's possible that it'll happen, but I'm not saying that it's that good of a chance. So 0.25 will be that. So this is kind of your range, what these numbers of probabilities represent in terms of words. So 0.5 probability, 0.5 is likely. Probability of one is certain. Probability of two, five, it's possible. Probability of zero, impossible. P, Thanksgiving falls on a Wednesday. Do y'all know anything about Thanksgiving and what day it always falls on? Thursday. Thursday. So what's the probability of this? Zero. Never. Probability Thanksgiving falls on a Thursday. Under it's a one always. So we're not only going to find the probability, we're also going to interpret what those probability values mean. So that's why we're using these words. So possible procedures that we'll use, rolling a die, answering multiple choice question, coin flipping would be another one.
drawing marbles, and so on. You get the idea. Okay, so it's important to know how we're going to round these. When we're dealing with probabilities, we're going to get a decimal, and it's going to be between 0 and 1. And what we are going to do is have three significant digits. So that means that we want three numbers behind the decimal. So we'll have a zero point and then three numbers. That's how we will round. So this first one, 0 0.021, so that's three. But then we look at the four and decide, are we going to round up or keep the same? Yeah. So this is going to round to 0 0.0214. No, 21. Sorry, I added that extra. There we go. So a zero is significant when it's behind the decimal. Zero in front, it's not significant because it doesn't affect uh, what this number is. One third. Yep. Good. And then 432. Okay. So it comes up to 550. So that just leaves us with 55055. And then probably it heads. Yep. 0.5. It's not necessarily necessary to put that zero out front. So it's up to you. Okay, in events. So like I was saying, the probability that an event occurs, the likelihood the event occurs. We're going to decide what that event is. So it's any collection. of results or outcomes. Of an experiment. Experiment, there we go. Or observation. Experiment, let's drop that in. There we go. So our notation would be like A, B, C. Um, we could say the event is heads, uh, tails, yes, no, etc. So those are events. A simple event is when you just have one event that cannot, cannot be broken down into simpler components. So a simple event would be like I'm saying heads, tails, yes, no. Um, something that's not simple would be like the probability of having um, two girls um, as far as like having babies. So that's two individual events. You have one girl and then you have another girl. So that can be broken down. So a simple event would be probability of having, giving birth to a girl. Sample space is all possible outcomes. of an event.
So the example is a woman wants to have three babies. What are the possible gender combinations? So let's first talk about what the simple event is. So this is a compound event because we're talking about three births. So the simple event would be just having all possible outcomes. What are the possible outcomes for just the single event? Boy or girl. Boy or girl. And uh, not a simple event would be saying two girls and one boy. The sample space, we're going to list out all possible combinations. So we're going to put it in this little um, brace. We're going to list them all out inside a brace. So options would be girl, girl, girl. I'm going to abbreviate with just the letters. And girl, girl, boy. Girl, boy, girl. Um, what else? Um, Boy, girl, girl, and then we'll go to starting with boys. Um, boy, boy, boy. Boy, girl, boy. Boy, boy, girl. Girl. Oh, yeah, is that right? I think I got them all now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight in the sample space. Okay, so we have probability. We can find probability three different ways. So this first one is called relative frequency probability. So this is found by using a, an experiment. Conduct or observe and count how many times event A occurs. So this is either observing or conducting an actual experiment. And so the way we find the probability of event A happening is you put number of times A occurs whenever you perform that experiment over total procedures or observations. back to like fifth and sixth grade um i know whenever i taught seventh grade i did um like m ms i gave them a pack of m ms they counted them up they found the probability of getting a brown m m probability of getting a red m, &M. Are you doing no <laughs> do i need to bring some m ms do we need to try this out yeah yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. All right, so this is also called empirical probability or experimental probability. So experimental, what actually happens? Not based on theory. It's just what you actually count, what you actually see. So example one, P, attack lands, point up. So you toss the tack up as many times as you can. Then you count how many times it lands point up. And you put that over how many total tosses you do. 
Example two, a recent survey of 1,010 adults in the U.S. showed that 202 of them smoke. Find the probability that a randomly selected adult in the U.S. is a smoker. So on this one, you would do probability. So we're going to use P for probability of, in parentheses, the event. The event is you picked a smoker, so I'm just putting smoker. One thousand two hundred two over one thousand ten. So we're actually going to divide that and then simplify. So we do two hundred two divided by thousand ten, and we just get point two. So there's a twenty percent chance, right? Because this will convert to twenty percent. Twenty percent chance. That if you randomly select a, a U.S. adult, um, that you would get um, someone who smokes. Example three. Your teacher recorded that you were absent from your statistics class four times in the last 38 days. Find the probability that you will be absent on any given day. So it'll be probability that you're absent. is found by how many times you were found to be absent for out of your total days that it was uh, observed. So four out of 38, we divide it. All right, next page. Law of large numbers. So if you perform an experiment over and over and over and over and over, it's going to get closer and closer to the actual probability. If you have a small sample set um, or a small experiment, you're not going to be as close to the actual probability. So that's your law of large numbers. As a procedure, is repeated the I'm gonna call it empirical empirical probability probability what's wrong with me I'm sorry probability as a procedure is repeated, the empirical probability gets closer and closer to the actual probability. So they use computers. Um, out in the real world, we use computers to simulate different events so that you get closer and closer to the actual probability. So that will repeat it over and over. Classical probability, this is what's known as theoretical probability. This is what happens in theory. So what should happen if all simple events, not single, simple, are equally likely. So you can't have probabilities that are equally likely for this uh, classical probability. So P of A for theoretical is found by doing number of ways A can occur over sample space. So your sam sample space, again, that's your, all your possible outcomes. So 
So that's in theory what should happen. Calculations can become very complex and the probability of each simple event must have an equal chance of occurring like we said a minute ago. So P of two with a balanced and fair dice. So how many ways can you get a two on a fair die? So how many times can you get a two on a fair die? No. If I roll it, how many twos are on a die? There's just one of them. One number two on a die. Five dice? Die? I don't know. Um, so then that means only one on top. So P of two is one out of how many total sides? And then what's that as a decimal? So we need to, um, yeah, point one six seven, right? Because it's. <laughs> All right, example two. For the probability that a couple has three children, they will have exactly two boys. So probability. That B, there's two Bs. So look back over here. So how many options did we have where they had two boys? Did they say exactly two boys? Yeah. Okay. How many? Yeah, I only see three. Yeah, there's only three. So that would be three out of how many? What's the sample space on that? Eight. Eight. All right, let's write it as a decimal. Three, seven, five. Okay. Find the probability that if you flip a coin three times, you get tails more than once. Oh, so this is. Flipping a coin three times. We need to list out all our possible outcomes. Heads or tails, yeah. But we're flipping it three times. Could I get tails, tails, tails? All right. We got to list out all our sample space. Tails, tails, heads. Heads, tails, tails. Heads, heads, tails. What else? Heads, tails, tails. Yeah. Nope. H T T. Um, H H H. H T H. Mm, yep. There's one more. <laughs> heads, tails, heads. Tails, heads, tails. Heads, tails, 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 heads, heads. What else? We We're missing one. We don't have tails, heads, heads. Tails, heads, heads. heads. Okay, cool. So let's write what the probability notation would be. So probability, you will get a tails more than once. So probability, how can I write tails more than once? T. Greater than one. Yep. So let's look. What's how many have tails more than one? Yeah. Yep. Four out of eight. And then what does that equal? Point five. Okay. The last type of probability is subjective. So this is estimated by using knowledge of relative. Teachers at this time, can you?
Based on relevant circumstances. So like a meteorologist. They use their knowledge of weather conditions to determine the probability of rain tomorrow. Um, example two is what is probably you will get stuck in the next elevator you ride. So is it, so where would it fall on this? So based on your experience, what's the probability you'll get stuck in the next elevator you ride? You don't think it's, you possible. think it's impossible? It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. I would say 0. 0.25 because it, it's, you know, around there. So it's possible. But let's say you have really bad luck and every elevator you go on, like it gets stuck. Then you'll be like, ah, I think it's supposed to be up here. Okay, keep it on this page. I want to write one more thing. Um, did y'all know that whenever they make predictions, you know, whenever you look at the Weather Channel, if they say it's a 55% chance of rain, do you know what that means? going to rain if there's a 55% chance that it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. So it's based on your area. So it's it says there is a 0 0.55 probability that it will rain in the region or area that you're looking up the weather at some point during the day. Some people think of it or that I wanted to clarify that because some people are like 55% chance of rain means it's going to rain 55% of the day. Like that's not true. It'll rain somewhere in the region. All right, probabilities and outcomes that are not equally likely. So think about uh, the probability that a Republican will win the next election. It's not one half because there's more than just um, that one variable of being Republican or Democrat. There's so much more to it. So those are not equally likely. A complement of an event. So this is the opposite of A. So all outcomes in which A does not occur. So see how it has P with a line on top? That's the complement of A. So if I say, if I have an A with that on top, I say probability of the complement of A. In reality, more boys are born than girls. In one typical group, there were 205 newborn babies. 105 of them were boys. If one baby is randomly selected, what, what is the probability that the baby is not a boy? So you would write it as probability of the complement of boy. We need to know all the events that were not boys. What is it? Yep, 100. Because 100 are not boys. 100 are girls. Over 205. Is it 488? You are choosing marbles out of a bag that contains six red, four yellow, and five green. If one marble is chosen, what is the probability that you do not choose a yellow? So that would be probability of the complement of yellow. So what do I add together? 
Red and green. Red and green. So that'd be 11. Over total, 6 plus 4 plus 5. 15. Another way of finding the complement is actually the probability of a complement is the probability uh, one minus probability of a. It's kind of like taking a hundred percent and taking the probability that it does happen, and you get the probability of it not happening. So, like this one would be one minus the probability of yellow would be four out of fifteen. So you do one minus four fifteenths, which if you're finding um, common denominators, you do it like this. So it comes out to the same thing that 11 over 15, which is 0 0.73. So this is an important uh, formula to know. Okay, we will finish the next part in the next video.